So what we're doing in this clip is we are calculating variances, sample variances, sample covariances and correlations of two random variables, the height and the weight variable, x and y variables here. We do this by Excel. We're doing it two ways. Firstly, we're just recreating the table just in Excel, but using the formula capabilities of Excel to make our life a little bit easier. And then we are also using inbuilt formulas in Excel. Okay, so let's first just do it as if we were doing the calculations by uh, by hand. Okay, so we know we need the y bar, the average of weight. So we need the sum. So we're using the sum functions here, the sum of all of this. Okay, so you highlight this entire column. And then we need the sum here. We can just copy that formula, copy and paste, control C and control V. So we get 1850 and 802. Then we need yi minus y bar. Okay, so how do we do that? Oh, we want to calculate, let's say, say the mean here. So the mean is this divided by 12 because we have 12 observations and the mean for the height is this divided by 12. Okay, so here are the mean values. So now what we want here is that, sorry, for yi minus bar y or y bar, we want this value minus this value. Press enter. Here we have that. So we want to do that for the entire column here, but uh, let's actually copy that down, but there will be a problem. You can see here that here all we're going to get is 150. And why do we get that? Because if you highlight the formula, see as we copy it down, it moved the references down as well. And that was right for that blue reference because we now wanted 150 minus y bar. But you see we wanted to stick this one, that red reference should still be on the mean. So the way to do that is that in your formula, if you know I'm going to copy that formula, but I want this B16 to always be a B16, what you do is you put a dollar sign in front of the B and a dollar sign in front of the 16. And now if we copy this down, you see we get these values and just highlight a random value here. It's 168 minus 154. That's exactly what we want. Okay, now we've lost this one. Um, if you take the sum of these deviations, you should always get zero. That's a good test. Okay, you get something very small. E to the negative 13 means there's 13 zeros before you get to the 1.13. So that's virtually zero. So let's do the same for xi. So we want that one minus the mean and we already know that we want to fix the mean so the column and the row reference is fixed with that dollar sign and we copy that down and again we could just calculate the sum and again we get something extremely small so this is virtually zero let me just enter a zero here just i'm not getting confused okay so then we want the squared values of these deviations so that time to the power of two so this one actually we can copy that across here let's see does it do the right thing yeah okay e2 squared it does exactly the right thing so we highlight both we copy that down and has it done the right thing we just check a few more cells yes that deviation squared Yes, that deviation squared. So that's all okay. So again, you can calculate the sum of this and calculate the sum here. Okay, and then we can calculate actually um, the sample variances, sample variances, which will be this divided by n minus one, so divided by 11. Oh, we can just copy that across here. Let's see, does that do the right thing? Yes, divide by 11. So the sample variance for y is 2417878. The sample variance for x is 17.42. So now we need these cross products. So we go to yi minus y bar. 
times xi minus x bar. So both of these are positive. We get a positive value here as we expect. Let's copy that down. Let's see mostly they're positive. Here's a negative one and that's because that is positive and that is negative. So that should be negative. Again here it's a negative one because we have different one positive and one negative deviation. That's all good. Let us calculate the sum. Okay and the sample here we get the sample covariance and that is going to be that divided by 11. Brilliant. So let's calculate the correlation and that is a sample covariance divided by the square root of this times this and we get 0 0.8632. Okay, so everything's identical to when we did the manual calculation. You realize just much quicker because we can use the power of Excel in terms of formula. Now we haven't really fully unleashed the power of Excel because let us just uh, copy, so I copy this and I copy I paste the value. Okay, so now the, the formula has disappeared. We just have the, the value. Actually, could you get to this result in a quicker way? For instance, without doing all these calculations, let me delete these. Okay, so without these calculations, none of these variances and means. Let's, uh, actually, I, mean, I want to do two more things. Let me just also fix all of these values. So I copy and I paste value. Okay, but uh, let me take away all of these calculations. So could we have arrived at these values without going through all this rigmarole on doing these calculations? So what about the mean here? Yes, the answer is yes. You can use the average function. Average of this is exactly the same. The average of this is again exactly the same. So this is our hand sort of hand calculation. This is using the Excel function, the average function. What about the sample variance? Okay, let's calculate that here. Equal, we want to use formula. Variance, let's see what Excel has to offer. It has var dot p, var dot s. Now we have a sample variance, so you need to know whether you're calculating a sample or population variance, so sample variance. So I highlight that and press tab. Okay, so Excel just picks up that variance. And now I need to tell what do I want the sample variance from? Well, from our y series, this series, close parenthesis. And what do we get? Exactly the same result. Brilliant. Let's try that trick again. Var dot s sample variance of our x series. Brilliant. Exactly the same result. This result by these two results by doing all these hand calculations or using Excel to the calculations. These ones just by using straight the formula without all of these intermediate calculations. What about the covariance? equals covariance and again you have a population or dot s sample covariance so let's use the sample covariance now you need to hand in two series the y series then comma and the x series and then close parenthesis enter and again miraculously or not so miraculously we of course get exactly the same result as we should. And lastly, the correlation. I'll just make some separation here. So lastly, the correlation. Can we calculate that directly as well? Correl. Now you realize there's actually no difference between sample or population correlation. It will always be the same. You can think about why that is the same. But again, we need two pieces of input, the Y series and the X series. And again, we get exactly the same result. 
This is excellent news. So now you know how to calculate all of these sample statistics very, very quickly in Excel by using these functions, correlation, variance.s, covariance.s, average. Okay. <coughs> so this is really, really good news. By the way, you could ask, does the correlation change if we switch the order? Let's calculate, let's check it. Okay, so we can calculate again a correlation function this time we take the x series first and then the y series and of course it doesn't change as you read in the lesson so i hope you realize that excel is a powerful tool for you when we don't ask you to do hand calculations usually you will want to do calculations in excel